What is going on you guys? Today I'll be bringing you the second part of my Git tutorial where I teach you some more advanced commands that you can use with Git. In today's tutorial I will be covering how to clone a repository, what remotes are and how to use them, fetching, branching, stashing, merging, and forking. And I know technically forking is a GitHub thing, not a Git thing, but I'm going to cover it anyways in case you guys want to go contribute to some open source projects. If you want to fast forward to a different section in the video, you can go ahead and click on one of these words on the side whenever you want and it'll take you to that section. If you don't know the Git basics such as committing, pushing, and pulling, I highly recommend you watch the first part of my Git tutorial by clicking on the video on the screen now. Alright, so first we're going to cover cloning. Cloning creates a remote handle that allows you to access a project's code and files on your local machine. You would want to do this if you originally made your project through GitHub or Bitbucket's site, or if you're accessing an existing project from a new computer. To clone a repository, you use the git command git clone, and then the URL you want to clone. This URL can be found on your project page on the GitHub or Bitbucket website, depending on what you are using to host your files. You want to make sure you grab the HTTPS version, not the SSH version. Now we'll be covering remotes. To show all of the configured remote servers that you have on this machine, you would run the command git remote. You can also add a dash v at the end to show the URL that git stores for the short name that you type in. The default remote that you see is called origin, which is fine if you only have one remote. If you have more than one remote, then you might want to add a name to that by using git remote add name and then the URL. This adds a new remote repository that can have a custom short name. So now we can run git fetch and then that name, and that will fetch all the updates from that remote. You can also rename remotes with the command git remote rename the current name and then the new name. This will rename the current remote to the new name. And lastly, you can remove a remote by using the command git remote remove and then the remote name. Next, we'll be covering fetching. Fetching gets all the data from a certain remote project, but it won't merge it with your changes. It's basically the same thing as pulling except for the automatic merging. The exact command you would use would be something like git fetch origin, or whatever your remote name is. Now I'll cover branching. Branching is used to separate different tasks while developing. For example, you could have one person working on player movement and one person working on a leveling system for a game. So you could create two branches, one called player underscore movement and one called leveling underscore system so that you know exactly what's being worked on in the branches and you can keep the changes separated. This is good because it makes sure that none of the other code changes that haven't been tested yet are affecting yours. So by default, your repository comes with a master branch. This should always be a working copy of your software. It's best practice to avoid developing straight onto the master branch. The commands for branching are git checkout dash b and then the branch name. This will create a branch and move you to that branch automatically. Another way that you can create a branch is using git branch and then the branch name. This will achieve the same task as the previous command except for it won't automatically switch you. It is important to realize that whatever branch you create a branch from, that's the code that you're going to get. So it's best practice to create a branch off of master so that you know that your code is stable before you start developing. After you're done making the branch, make sure you run the git push remote branch name command so that everyone will have access to your branch. Alright, so you have your new branch and you started working, but then you realize, oh no, I made these changes on an old branch and I want that on the new branch. While this seems like it could be a troubling situation, all you have to do is run one simple command, and that command is git stash. This will save all the changes you've made so that you can switch it to your new branch and then apply them there using the git stash apply command. Then you can run a git diff and you can see that all your changes have been saved. Be aware that if you git stash twice without applying the changes, the initial changes will be lost. There are ways you can recover them, but I'm not going to cover that in this tutorial. If that ever happens, you can just look it up and it's pretty straightforward. Merging. Alright, you're done with all the work on this branch and it's been tested. You want to merge this onto master. To merge a branch into master, all you have to do is switch to the master branch and run the command git merge new branch. This will merge the new branch into the master branch. If you are prompted to give a commit message right away, then all went well. If there were conflicts, you will have to fix them manually and then commit. To find merge conflicts, you can run git status to find the files with problems and fix the issues from there. Don't forget to run git add and the file name before committing. Lastly, I'm going to cover forking. And like I mentioned in the intro, this is not necessarily a git feature, it is for github only, but if you're interested in doing open source projects and contributing to those, 
it's going to be necessary for you. So basically the idea behind forking is you want to work on a project that you don't have permissions to commit to. So to actually fork the repository, you click on this button and it creates a copy of it in your profile. From there you can clone it and start developing on that branch. And after you're done making all of the changes, you need to open a pull request and the owner decides whether or not to accept your changes. Alright, so that about wraps it up for part 2 of the Git tutorial. I am considering making a tutorial for the GUI for the GitHub application as well as the source tree application. If you guys want to see that, go ahead and leave me a comment. If not, I'll get to it when I get to it. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more tutorials on pixel art and general coding knowledge, please consider subscribing. I put out new content every week. Thank you and I'll see you guys next time.